136. Psalm 136. And we're going to do something a little bit different tonight in that we are going to have a responsive reading. What that means is that when I pause, you'll say the next part of the verse. Um, and this is pretty easy for anybody that is looking at the text. There is a, um, a phrase that keeps on happening, and it is this phrase, for his mercy endureth forever. So when I stop, then we do, for his mercy endureth forever. So I'll read the first part, and then you read that part, okay? All right, let's see how this will work. All right, on verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. For his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretcheth out the earth above the waters. To him that made great lights, the sun to rule by day, the moon and stars to rule by night, to him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, and brought out Israel from among them. With a strong hand and with a uh, uh, stretched out arm. For his mercy to him which divided the Red Sea into parts. For his mercy forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it. For his mercy forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. For his mercy to him which led his people through the wilderness. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy forever. and slew famous kings, for his mercy forever. Sihon, king of the Amor Amorites, for his mercy forever. and Og of the, the king of Bashan, for his mercy forever. and gave their land for an inheritance. Even an heritage unto Israel his servant, for his mercy forever. who remembereth us in our low estate, for his mercy forever. and hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy forever. who giveth food to all flesh. For his mercy oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. For his mercy forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we will spend some time on this psalm. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for giving us this time together. We ask you to help us to know you better, to be truly thankful for all the wonderful things that you have given us, so that we might praise you more and more. We thank you so much for this time to, to think and consider the things that we have to be thankful for. And Father, may you help me as I speak and help all of us attune our hearts to your word. I do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the, the phrase, for his mercy endureth forever. What a wonderful thing that that is. Um, give me a second. I'm going to do something here. One moment. Okay. That feedback was driving me crazy. <laughs> All right. So, his mercy endureth forever. Uh, it's an amazing thing to think about that something will last forever. You know, everything in the world we have here is temporary. 
We might think it might last forever. Like, for instance, if you ever bought a, a car and it's pretty brand new, you know, it might not be brand new, but it's, it's new to you, and you think, oh, this will last forever. Uh, not really. <laughs> Eventually, you go to the mechanic, and the mechanic says, I got bad news for you. Oh, boy. And so you think to yourself, well, it, that doesn't last forever. But yet God's mercy endureth forever. The word mercy there has a few different uh, notions to it. One is that of his goodness. His goodness towards individuals. That will last forever. Another idea with this word mercy is the word kindness. Kindness towards us. Another idea, faithfulness to his people. This word is the, the, the covenantal word that displays God's faithfulness from him to us. Or really, the nation of Israel, and then from that to us as well. His mercy endureth forever. His loving kindness endureth forever. His faithfulness endureth forever. His kindness endureth forever. His goodness endureth forever. Oh, we have so much uh, to be thankful for when it comes to that of God Himself. And so tonight we're going to very, be very uh, brief, we'll say, uh, and just think about this text and then how many more things we can think of that we can be thankful for as according to the Bible. So notice with me the very first uh, four, no, three verses. Verse w number one, I'm just going to read the first part, and I'm going to forego the, the, for his mercy endureth forever, and we get an idea about what he's talking about, verses one through three. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. First of all, we see number one, that we should be praising or giving thanks unto God for who he is. And that's, that's evident here. Give thanks unto the Lord. The word Lord there is the, the word that means that he is forever. He is, he was, he will always be. It, it's also a word that shows that he absolutely doesn't need anything to be existent. Like a, us, we need food, we need water, we, we need things in order to be alive, we need air to breathe. God doesn't. God doesn't need anything. If I think about it, why are we here? Because he wanted us, and he loved us, and so he created us. I thought, wow, that's, that's an amazing thought about God not needing us whatsoever, but yet he wanted us, he loved us, and so we are. God is so great. So think about who he is, for he is is good he is the only one that you can consider as perfect and think about it all these other religions that you might see and understand their mythology none other god is like our god uh, there's no other uh, religion that that even gets close to how great god is you think about uh, the different mythologies and really what what the mythology about these gods and doing all these things what they are are just superpowered humans doing whatever they want to do. That's really what it boils down to is, oh, these stories about these gods and all this. No, God is perfect. God is good. God is righteous. And he's the God of gods. And he is Lord of lords. No matter what is going on in today's world, he is still sovereign. He is still in control. He is still the one that you go to and say, everything seems like it's going absolutely crazy, but God still, under, God still has everything in his control. And think about how great he is. And we could talk about over and over again his attributes and all the characteristics that God has and, and that he, he portrays to us in his word. For instance, you think about it, God is omnipotent. That means he is all-powerful, yeah, omnipotent. He's all power. 
He can do whatever He wants to do. And that just shows all the, the miracles that we have in the Bible. Anything that God wants to do will happen, even if He has to suspend the natural laws in order to do so. Like, I don't know how in the world Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water. Physically, you're not able to do that. If you think that you are, please videotape. You go into that pool thinking you might be walking on water. and That's not going to work. Uh, but think about it. Who God is. God is great. God is everlasting. God is eternal. God is omnipotent. He is all-knowing. Think about it. When we think we might be getting away with something, God already knows. Uh, think about it. Everything that we need, God already knows. He knows all things from eternity past to eternity future. He knows it all. And He knows all about our struggles. He knows all about our pains in life. He knows all about the sometimes loneliness that only our relationship with God can really describe God knows. And not only that, but God is everywhere at the same time. And so when you feel all by yourself that you are lonely, then God is with you. That got me through some really hard times at college. Like when I went to college, I didn't know what I was doing in, for the most part. I thought, I thought, okay, the Lord has called me into the ministry. I got to get educated so God showed me exactly what college to go to. And I thought, all right, we got to do it. But all of a sudden, I found myself there with the thought of, I have to buy all these books. Oh, my. <laughs> and they're heavy. And there are a lot of them, too. And I thought, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I go to work, and I'm, I'm at food service. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. So you better help me, please. Uh, but yeah, God was with me all throughout. And even at times where things were very disappointing, uh, whenever the time was that I, I thought, okay, am I really called to the ministry? Like, for instance, when my teacher looked at me and said, asked me my major, and I said, well, it's, it's pastoral ministries. And she looked at me and said, you should really reconsider your major. Do something that doesn't involve public speaking, please. Uh, and so I, I, I got with God. I'm like, Lord, I, I believe you did call me into the ministry and you're going to help me with that. But God was there for me with that. When I went to the, the church that I, uh, <clears throat> I preached at, my first time preaching at a church, and the pastor sits me down and he says, that was the worst sermon I've ever heard. And I thought, boy, that, that is telling this guy is at least like 50 years in the ministry. That was the worst sermon I have ever heard. I thought, whoa, boy, buddy, I'm, I am thinking I might be mistaken. So I got alone with God. I'm like, Lord, help me. And uh, it, are you really going to put me into the ministry? And uh, after I was praying about God, uh, gave me reassurance. He was there for me when I needed him. So praise the Lord. God is who he is. Secondly, not only that, but we see that we should praise the Lord about creation itself. Notice with me in verse number 4, 5, and 6, and 7, and 8, and 9. Boy, that, it goes on for a while. Uh, look with me at verse number 4. To him who alone doeth great wonders. Specifically, verse 5, to him that by wisdom made the heavens... Verse 6, to him that stretcheth out the earth above the waters. Verse 7, to him that made great lights. Verse 8, the sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The, the moon and stars to rule by night. Think about it, all the wonderful works, specifically of creation. I go out into God's wondrous creation, and I just say, wow, God is amazing. Think about the best thing about, about his creation that you might think about. Great sights. Has, you've been to that Grand Canyon, maybe? Sunset? Absolutely. 
I always love to see sunsets or sunrises, and I think, wow, God is so good. All the beautiful colors in the, in the sky. And if it's sunset with clouds nearby, it just kind of does this really wondrous thing. I thought to myself I would be like a, a painter, and I'll just take a picture of it and just try to figure out all the colors and all that. Well, I thought that would take way too much time. I, I'm not a painter whatsoever. So, But praise the Lord for the, the stunning sunsets, stunning sunrises, the amazing things about our wondrous world, you know, mountains and the mountain peaks and just amazing things that we have. We think about the animal kingdoms, and there's so many different types of animals that are around that you'll just say, wow, that is amazing, as long as it's not in my house. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, for instance, you know, there's a bug that uses two different uh, chemicals put together, and it shoots out a explosive result in order to ward off all the uh, uh, predators. It, it's part of the creatures that defy evolution, you know, series. So I always I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. It shoots it out. Poof. <laughs> So, people, so the animals nearby just say, okay, forget that, that creature, you know, as long as it's not in my house. Uh, so you think about all the, the things that we have in creation itself. Think about the stars overhead. I always love to go out and just walk around and just look at the stars and, and all the constellations. I, I took astronomy class, and you would think I would remember the, uh, the constellations. I don't remember... I, Orion, that's pretty easy. You know, that, that's pretty good. But yet, seeing the stars and amazing things of nature, just amazing. God is so powerful that he put it all together. God is so wise that every single thing that we see in creation just shows how great God is. And think about it this way. The creation that we see is fallen. It would have been a lot better if it wasn't. Think about the Garden of Eden. Everything is perfect. Everything is just the way it should be. But yet, now, because of sin entering the world, death by sin, we go out, still it's good, but how much greater it would have been if it did not fall. But looking forward to the new heaven and new earth, how amazing that will be if if we are seeing things and we're stunned by the beauty of the earth, how much greater the new earth, the new heavens. Just amazing. And then number three, not only about who God is, not only about creation itself, but also number three, we should remind ourselves about the deliverance that God has given us. Think about the deliverance that God has given us. Uh, notice with me in verse number 10, to him that smote Egypt in their firstborn and brought out Israel from among them with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm to him which divided the Red Sea into parts and made Israel to pass through the midst of it, but overthrew Pharaoh and his, his hosts in the Red Sea. Just amazing. Think about the deliverance of the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel in the land of Egypt. They were in bondage. They were nothing but slaves uh, under the hand of Pharaoh. There is no way. And at this point in time, Pharaoh is the number one nation person in the world. He is the most powerful king in the world at this point in time. And if you would say to any of the, the, the Hebrews at that point in time saying, Hey, you think you guys are going to get out of here some point in time in the future? There's no way, there is no way we're going to be able to get out of bondage because Pharaoh has the greatest army. Pharaoh has everything going for him. He is the richest person because of Joseph. Uh, he is the number one person in the t entire world. And there's no way we're going to get out of here except it be by the hand of God. And think about how God miraculously got his, his people and get, got them out of the, the bondage that they were in and brought them through the Red Sea, destroyed the, the armies of Pharaoh and, and all of that. Think about that for our own, our own reality. 
from bondage to deliverance. We were lost. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. But yet God, through His wondrous grace, brought us to deliverance. By putting our faith on Lord Jesus Christ, we no longer have things against us on our account, but rather we have forgiveness. We have the forgiveness of our sins. We have it purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. And with His stripes we are healed. By His blood we are now made whole. We are made from our sins were red as scarlet, but now they are white as snow. All of these wonderful things. We are now part of the family of God. Uh, no longer are we at odds with God, but now we are family. We are His children. We are His sons. We're, we are His daughters. Uh, and we have all of these magnificent things to, to think about, the amazing things about salvation itself. And the very fact that that you see here in the text that it, they were from victims to victors. Uh, notice with me in verse number 14, and made Israel, no, verse 16, sorry, to him which led his people through the wilderness, to him which smote great kings and slew famous kings, Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan, and gave their land for an heritage even an heritage unto Israel and his servant who remembered us in our low estate and hath remembered us from our enemies, who giveth food to all flesh. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. So he talks about Israel in the midst of the, the wilderness. He kind of bypasses the whole 40 years of uh, waiting for that generation to pass away. But then he had great victories over Og and Sihon. These were the major uh, kings of the land. And so because of that, we see them being just victors over and over and over again. Some people like to root for the ones that they know are going to win. Like if I asked some of my, my kids talking about football, because they all, they all have their... their uh, their favorite football team, not based on where they, what, where uh, these football teams are from, but rather the the well icon as the Panthers, as the Bears, as the you know, whatever one that they chose. They they thought, oh, that was a cool one. Let's go with that. Um, but one of them just said, uh, uh, "So who who do you want to win? Whoever wins is who I'm rooting for." Okay. <laughs> so on one hand, we're 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 watching a game. And then, okay, this one scores, yay, this, that team. And then the next time, that team scored, yay, that team. And eventually, okay, my team won. This is great. <laughs> but no, think about it. If you know that the team is going to win without a shadow of a doubt, then you have this overcoming confidence. Like if, if I knew that my team won and I'm going to see the replay, there's no sweat about it. It's like, okay. Oh, interception happened. Oh, that's, that's bad, but I know we're going to win. Oh, oh, this happened. Oh, that's terrible. I know we're going to win. Oh, that, oh, whatever. I don't know terminology for football too well. Uh, oh, he got sacked. Oh, I don't, uh, that's bad, but we're going to win. But yeah, at the end, we see how it, it works out. We don't understand how everything works together, but yet God has it all under control and through it all, he makes us more like Christ. Through it all, he makes it all the, the things that we might say, this is, this is not a good thing, this is not a great thing in my life. He turns it into good for our sakes. The things that we have, just amazing things. God is the victor. As somebody, uh, we were going through the book of Revelation, and my youth pastor at that time, um, he said, Okay, so all you have to know about Revelation, two words, God wins. That's it. That's all you need to know. All these other things that we're, we're asking the question of what, how is this going to work out, we're not going to know, but God wins. Now, how does all the economic things going on, what's the, 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 uh, the uh, sign of the beast and the 666 and all these different things. It doesn't matter. God wins. God wins. God wins. God wins. 
So through all of this, we have so much to be thankful for to the Lord because of who He is. So many things to remind ourselves about the goodness of God, the grace of God, the peace of God, the power of God, the omniscience of God, the the all-knowingness of God in our own circumstances. We can give thanks. Even if bad things happen to us, give thanks for God, for the Lord is good. So we're going to take some time right now and we're going to pray. And we're going we're gonna to just pray for what we are thanking the Lord about. Okay? We're not asking for anything. We're just praising the Lord for who He is. So I'll start us off and then pray as the Lord leads you and then I'll finish this up. Okay? So it's just thanking the Lord for something about Him, something that He has done in our lives. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for this opportunity to consider and to to think and ponder about Your greatness. And Father, may You bless this time that we can pray and give thanks before You. I do pray in Jesus' name. How wonderful you are to us. So many in, in the scriptures testify as to your grace and to your loving kindness to us, to the very wisdom that you had to create all things for your, for your pleasure. And Father, we thank you so much for you sending your son to die in our place that we can have everlasting life. We thank you of the Holy Spirit that now abides in each and every one of us that have put our faith in in Christ and the very fact that we can be with you and you, you can be with us throughout the difficulties in life that you know all about, everything about the difficulty, even how we feel, even through how, what we think about, even though at times we, we, we think, where you, where are you in the midst of that trial? But you are there. You are there when we are lonely. You, you are there in our utmost uh, desire for you. We ask you to bless this time, Father. We ask you to help us to glorify you and be thankful for all that you have given us. We praise you for how you have helped us along the way. And Father, we thank you for your, your word. And there's so much that we can be that we can praise you about. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.